at the okay so uh welcome everyone uh, good morning for us in brazil good evening for you guys in singapore so uh, i my name is uh, luis roberto which usually people call me beto so i'm a student of uh, psychiatry masters in, in psychiatry at the university of sao paulo uh, i have experience in business administration and marketing so i'm using this interdisciplinary uh, experience uh, to gather people around uh, forming an ecosystem in which uh, we can foster the incorporation of uh, digital innovation in, in mental health. So this is basically my area of, of interest. So today here with us, uh, we have uh, Lisiane Bizarro, which is a full professor of uh, psychology at the University of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, and she's a director of uh, the Brazilian Society of uh, Psychology. And she recently wrote a paper in collaboration with several uh, psychology associations, which I think I, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So I'll start uh, asking this, Yanni. Um, well, uh, we, we have a, a huge, uh, the, the COVID-19 exposed us a lot in terms of the, the major need that uh, and the attention that we should be giving to, to mental health. So uh, in, in your opinion, uh, let's, let's start uh, with uh, what, what's the role of the psychologist in, in, this, in this context and what is the role that psychologists thinks that they have in this context that they're uh, currently living in? So that's, that's with you, Lizani. You're on mute. <laughs> Always the same mistake, isn't it? <laughs> so hello, everyone. Nice to see you. And thanks for invite for the invitation to take part of this panel. And it's a great opportunity. I think fostering ecosystems is the best of the pandemics. <laughs> so we foster ecosystem from our homes, isn't it? So it's very good. And I really enjoyed the presentations before that. And I don't know how many psychologists we have in this room. Just me. Oh, Diane, very good. Oh, oh, very good, very good. So Felix, too. So I will um, start uh, saying that mental health is more than the absence of mental illness. And this is a very important point for psychologists because it uh, enhances the opportunities we have as a science to contribute. There is a, a very important paper uh, just in the beginning of the pandemics, I have the reference that can, uh, uh, it's like behavioral science, how they can help uh, during the pandemics. It was published in, in Nature, one of the Nature Group uh, uh, research that I will send in the chat later on. And it shows that it can go from uh, how you, how can you enhance the use of masks and social distance and washing hands in uh, public places, in companies, in hospitals? How can you, uh, let's say, change the behavior of the people uh, in favor of the health and the mental health issues? And one of the striking initiatives we had uh, as, the, as the Brazilian Society of Psychology was joining um, uh, a group of, uh, not a group, but an initiative from the uh, Pacto uh, Global, that is the um, uh, World Health, uh, no, on its United Nations organization uh, representatives in Brazil, to increase the awareness for mental health in companies, like in the private companies. And we have seen uh, in Brazil lots of um, initiatives in the digital uh, offering of mental health in different ways, you know. So most of them are uh, centered on the pandemics and on the care that is needed for mental health uh, during this period, either for specific groups, for instance, lawyers or uh, uh, those who work with uh, the patients of COVID, so it's the, the health workers. But then what we will have after that? 
not after, because I think the pandemic is going to be here forever, but after the shocking of the first and second years, uh, what uh, psychology can uh, provide to people. So there will be uh, a lot of work to be done. For instance, in Brazil, we have uh, half a million people already dead because of the uh, pandemics. But then we have the families and the children that were left behind. And this is a huge social impact. Um, also, how can we uh, cope with the stress of having this chronic uh, illness among us? And how companies and how the, you know, the, the whole ecosystem as a society will cope with this stress in the long term? And the consequence of that, for instance, the increase of violence at home and the lack of uh, studies among the, the children and the social contact and the social, um, the social and emotional uh, capacities that they will have to develop in, uh, they had to develop before that, but we were in a stable environment. But because of this uh, changes, how many, uh, um, how many changes will have to, to be um, uh, fostered among this, the among the society you know the, the the people who participate in society so another issue that is very important is the confidence on science and how psychology as a science can be known by the people so how can we transmit the, our knowledge in a way that people can use them in their everyday life to make decisions to uh, also to improve their lives as, um, as emotional and uh, cognitive ways. We will have also the people who survived COVID and they have uh, either emotional or cognitive or both problems in the long term. And how the work and school and uh, health service will provide this care. So what I think is that there are lots of opportunities in different countries, and it will depend on how the profession and the science of psychology is seen in these countries. And this was what we try to grasp in this um, paper, comparing the BRICS countries in, uh, because we have a socioeconomic reality very similar we comprise nearly half of the population of uh, the world, thanks to India and China in this group. But it's a, it's a very striking similarities on the socioeconomic impact, as Ayani mentioned, that is very important uh, issue for mental health. And, but at the same time, psychology has different levels of developing development in these countries. So like Russia and China, they have ancient psychology. They have, they are a hundred years, you know, more than a hundred years with psychology among them. And Brazil is uh, a younger uh, country as a, as a scientific uh, and even professional uh, psychology in South Africa is very close to medical doctors and psychiatrists, so it's a more concern to, to mental illness than mental health, but they have a very strong culture uh, that can provide uh, a, a, a cultural adaptive um, psychology. So I think okay, we have any... a... a yeah, I have an, we have an ecosystem that is very rich, but we don't have the means to do that. So psychologists have to join other, like the people from technologies, from artificial intelligence, from data science, to better understand the, this environment. So we have to develop skills in psychologists. And also we have to let other science know that we can provide care in different levels. And I really like the, the 
uh, WHO pyramid because this is a, a very starting model for a general approach of the problem. Okay, thank you, Lizanne. Sorry, I don't want to be rude. I just, just want to stick okay. to, the, to the timing to, to give uh, space for everyone to, to talk. So uh, I think it's, it, it's very interesting. I really enjoyed uh, the, the article that you mentioned. So it would be good if you can share with us uh, on the chat so everybody can access it. Mm -hmm. And for sure that these inter interdisciplinary collaborations, they are uh, very important for us to spread out uh, these um, these initiatives and, and provide more information to reduce stigma and, and improve the well the awareness about the role of the psychologist and how can we uh, increase this uh, access to, to 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 patients. So uh, just just getting this uh, this uh, this bridge, I uh, will uh, pass the, the ball to Daniel. Daniel is uh, a researcher from the from the University of São Paulo. Uh, we are collaborating in a few in a few studies. Actually, we just uh, submitted a project to the FAPESP to to well to design and and to launch the the Brazilian uh, Innovation Center on Mental Health, and we expect to to get this approved uh, next year. I know that uh, Dr. Maria Cesa is also part of this of this group, so it's interesting that uh, we are moving with the same uh, mind in terms of. Uh, increasing the collaboration and the, the researchers on, on mental health and with psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, designers, and tech people, and et cetera. So I'll just pass the ball to Daniel to, to hear about his impressions and uh, what he sees as a researcher, as an entrepreneur on, on, on mental health. And if this is a direction that uh, we are taking uh, is, in, in his opinion, is sufficient or not, if we should also aim for uh, some other activities. So thank you, Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Beto, for inviting me. And also thank you for organizing this event alongside Becky. Uh, this is a very interesting panel from people all over the world sharing experiences and discussions. Um, so um, just as uh, Diane and, and, and Maria Seis has said, Brazil is a very unequal country. Uh, I started my, my career as a researcher uh, during my master's studying epidemiology of mental disorders in childhood and adolescence. And back then, uh, uh, we showed that uh, only 20% of children and adolescents with mental disorders are actually getting treatment, <laughs> adequate treatment. And, and many years later, I replicated this result in a much larger sample, also showing that only 20% are, uh, of children and adolescents with mental disorders are actually getting any treatment. And this, and this, this prevalence of, of, of treatment is, is very similar in adults here in Brazil. There's a very recent paper by, uh, by the, the epidemiology group here in the University of Sao Paulo showing that around 20% of adults with mental disorders actually get any treatment at all. So, so we have this huge problem here in Brazil. This is, the, this is my main message here. And I believe there's a, there's a lot of uh, reasons for that, like uh, lack of uh, good policies, lack of financial uh, investments from the government, uh, probably also a lot of problems uh, regarding the the private sector, the health private sector, because it's very expensive here in Brazil, and also because we have a, a, a lack of human resources. Uh, we have we have very few mental health professionals in the system, uh, and 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 to address this, uh, we, we can do. There's a lot of ways. I would say we can increase investments we can train more people we can we can we can do like a task task shifting approach when you have other professionals or even lay people treating uh people with mental disorders but one of the approaches that are, that I've been doing in the past 3 to 4 years is using technology to 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 uh, to at least give some sort of treatment or, or initial treatment for people with mental disorders. So I developed a, an app called Motherly that is uh, designed to treat and prevent maternal depression. 
so it is specifically related to 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 mothers and also during the covid-19 pandemic i co-created uh, another app that is more focused on psychoeducation so uh we we basically uh deliver videos depression anxiety stress and 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 how to to avoid being contaminated uh hygiene, uh, also hygiene tips and stuff like that. So this is one approach that I've been investing in the past years. And one of the barriers, I think uh, uh, Beto already mentioned a little bit of it, uh, is that mental health professionals and also patients are not that uh, aware of these, of these technologies, are not used to these technologies. So the adherence has been very, very slow here in Brazil. Uh, especially among poor people, uh, so we need to we need to develop better evidence. Show these apps are actually uh, 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 efficacious here in Brazil. They are actually uh, adapted to our needs, uh, so that we can start uh, recommending these apps for patients and professionals. And also, I would like to finalize this 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 very brief talk, maybe with a. Uh, question more of a provocation. Uh, since we have this problem that we have very few people actually getting treatment here in Brazil, uh, and, and one of the approaches to address these issues is to use mental health apps, aren't we somehow creating like a second rate treatment for poor people? Because we are actually seeing very rich people still getting uh, psychiatric treatments, psychological treatment, but, but uh, at the same time, if, if you think that mental health apps are, are, are a good way, maybe maybe it's like we are focusing on, 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 on actually delivering a treatment that is not so good as this first rate treatment. Uh, so it's interesting to talk about that, especially here in Brazil, uh, since we have many, many approaches to address this lack of treatment issue here. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, before before entering on on the aspect that you mentioned about uh, the certification and the validation of uh, the digital solutions, uh, I would just uh, comment one thing that, uh, based on your on your speech, uh, I mean, uh, uh, besides the the incorporation of technology, I think that uh, there is a huge uh, gap in terms of health education, health literacy, mental health literacy. So that's probably the one of the reasons that uh, we still have a lot of stigma and we still have a lot of um, wrong usage or lack of adherence in these uh, digital solutions. So just to, to, to pass the balls to Giselle, who is a researcher at the University of Rio de Janeiro, uh, let's, let's, let's just uh, come, come back a little bit and, and, and talk about uh, prevention initiatives. So Giselle is currently uh, working with uh, lifestyle and, and health promotion initiatives, and she can uh, also contribute. Before we, we, we start on discussing mental health, so let's let's move one step back and discuss a little bit on, on health promotion. So Giselle, based on your experience as a researcher, as an entrepreneur, so the same question, what do you see uh, uh, the current hurdles and the current opportunities that uh, we face in this uh, landscape in Brazil in terms of technology adoptance. Okay, thanks a lot, Beto. Thanks a lot, all of you, to, to join the session. It's It's been a very good experience and I've been learning a lot also. And uh, to answer this, I, I, I I apologize, Beto, because I really want to mix all these questions and give not give an answer, but to then start this continue this conversation, uh, because uh, this question about uh, that Danielle sa asked it is really about um, maybe uh, if we put if we could put fo put focus on mental uh, uh, on health lifestyle, then maybe we could achieve more uh, uh, results, not just in mental, but also in physical activity and uh, all those things that complement our health. Lifestyle can help most of the chronic diseases and especially depression, we can see the benefits if we do an exercise. So it can make benefits from your brain, of, for your brain and also for your um, um, 
mood and others and then uh, that's why also now i bring to to myself <laughs> why i believe strongly that maybe there's a there's a cheap way to do this to uh, improve people's lives using uh, health promotion um, and uh, the second one is that something that uh, Lisiane said how can we make those uh, connection with people how can we then uh, show our um, solutions and our um, studies to people that really ha have to use that really uh, 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 will be um, uh, touched by our what we are thinking internally into the universities and into the studies. So this is also the second part part of my studies because first um, I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. So since I went out of the, my graduation, I'm graduated in physical therapy. Then um, I, I opened my own. Um, a company to promote lifestyle in companies in um, uh, for the industry because really um, uh, you uh, our colleagues told before that uh, if we could use the companies the industry environment to promote this um, uh, culture of health it's it's much easier we can uh, into the companies with social uh, relationships we can achieve not just the employees, but also their families. And then when we see we are impacting not just in, in, internally the companies, but outside and more and more. So I really believe that we have to, to make each time more these connections uh, between the studies and the real life. Like uh, here, we, um, um, I'm, I also have a, a role in Acestro that is an associate association of IT companies in Rio de Janeiro and my role uh, as a volunteer is to really understand the gap between um, the, 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 the research and uh, also the, the people that re we really want them to enjoy to use what we are preparing and producing for them inside but most of the time it doesn't go outside of the universities and also the companies they complain about what are the, the well what are the this research how can we improve and bring more value for our technologies so this is another point that I not just stress, but I'm working with is to make this to, to help them to make this connection and um, for example, to introduce those uh, entrepreneurs as mentors of the of, of some students and also bring some students inside of the companies for them really to understand uh, what are the pains, what can um, which business can come from them because at the end, we need all those skills, not just a multidisciplinary or um, where all of us are from the same healthcare area, but we need as also bad to come with this, 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 uh, um, this message. We need the administrators, we need the technology, we need uh, the communication people, because also if we have a very good research and if we have a very good uh, um, app, but if we cannot communicate that we have this so it will stay storage and nobody will will use it so this is part of what I'm, uh, we are doing and to promote this lifestyle as Beto asked me in the beginning to say we are uh, mixing all those things like um, education health education and also gamification and games health games and social um, social media also to to try to make those connections everything with content based on science so we think we are yes not that we have the the well the best thing but we understand that if uh, each time we can um, promote all those connections we can achieve more together great Chisedi. thank you very much uh, when you were speaking uh, the the image of the pyramid that wang presented just came up to my mind so uh, I think that one of the opportunities that we have with technology it is uh, it is possibility of escalating uh, the level of the 
the support that we are providing to patients according to the level of the serious the, of, of, of the disease of the of the patient so and and another aspect in terms of uh, spreading out uh, initiatives i think that it's good to have Liziani here since she's part of the brazilian psychiatry psychology association uh, brazilian psychology it's not association society sorry sorry brazilian so society of psychology um so that uh, we can we can actually uh joint forces in terms of uh, spreading out the word about these uh, these initiatives and just coming back to one of the aspects that uh, Danielle mentioned uh, we also need to take care on the quality of the solutions that uh, we are uh, distributing and promoting to to the people uh, we need to, it it need to be validated it need to be um, uh, shown that it's effective it's, uh, it's safe we have data protection and in terms of that, I think that this collaboration with it, uh, the, the societies and the other uh, institutions and associations could uh, leverage this kind of uh, let's let's put on marketing uh, the, the the solutions that we currently have. So uh, just just before we 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 we, we yeah yeah. So there's any if you want to to complement. I just I just would like to say we have two problems or three perhaps. One, we, we have a lot, that, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah. But the customers, let's say, of the business, they don't. They must see the value of the app or the initiative. If they don't see the value, if they don't see the science behind, people have no idea. And this is the second problem. People have no idea what psychologists study. If you if you search in the in the literature, what people think psychology do, oh, they do help people. But what do you study to help people? Nobody knows. So there is a science behind helping people in a way that you don't harm people when you try to help them. And the third problem is that we do not uh, have a, 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 we do not teach psychologists to see them, to use the science on their own lives as a knowledge to, to uh, improve their well-being. And maybe uh, this has changed in the last months, in the last year. Uh, and so how can they communicate the value of their knowledge to other people if they don't use on their own lives, you know? So we have to change the way we teach. That's one of the problem, the, the, the things, and how we communicate about our science. And one, uh, uh, taking the message that Giselle said, one of the ways of doing that is uh, entrepreneurs go to find the scientists on scientific meetings and invite scientists to go to entrepreneur uh, meetings. Because the language is very different. I, I work with the entrepreneurship uh, nucleus in my university, and it's a completely uh, different way of speaking and how you, you express your ideas and the language used that is more universal among the, the disciplines. But in psychology, it's a very specific way is that is um, that discourse is a is a uh, speech that is very encapsulated in technical terms. So I think we have to promote this uh, fluid communication, let's say, by visiting each other in our, you know, specific ecosystem. We have to mix ec ecosystem. I, I totally, I totally agree, Liziani, and, and my, my opinion around that. And after that, I would like to hear a little bit of uh, Diane, Maria, and Wang, if you have time, and probably Robert. Uh, I think that we need to uh, support this kind of uh, meetings. Uh, I mean, uh, as you mentioned, we, we, are, we are working with uh, multidisciplinary uh, specialists. So uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the, well, I could say one of the initiatives that we are working on is to launch uh, open innovation challenges to tackle this kind of uh, issues around uh, well-being around mental health and ideally put
putting the carrot in front of uh, people uh, to just to say, okay, so if you want to solve big issues, uh, build your multidisciplinary team and let's collaborate uh, on designing these kinds of solutions, but also uh, validating uh, with the, the scientific approach coming in from psychologists and psychiatrists and just combining this, uh, this kind of uh, knowledges uh, in, a common, in a common goal. So creating a, a, a landscape in which uh, different people with different specialties uh, could meet and, and, and work together to solve this kind of, this kind of problem. So, uh, and, and now I just want to, to hear a little bit of Diane. Uh, she, she had a little time just to explore uh, her opinion around the, the incorporation of uh, digital technologies to support uh, mental health and well-being and it'd be interesting for us to, to listen for her as well. Hi, sorry, which was your previous question? Sorry, I got a little bit distracted here. So the, the first question, which actually, was, could you repeat? Actually, was uh, your opinion around the incorporation of uh, digital technologies to support uh, mental health and well-being? Uh, in, on your speech during the, the opening session, I, I, I thought that I had the impression that you wanted to explore it a little bit more, but... Yeah, so I think there is lots of potential and I think it's needed. Uh, I don't think it's something that will happen in the future, it's already happening. And there, in Brazil, there, are so, there is still so much space to do so. Uh, however, I think that there are lots of things that we have to consider while doing so. And I was, uh, I was trying to explain in my presentation, Brazil is so diverse and there are so many factors that influences mental health, as Gisele, Gisele was saying, uh, even if we talk about lifestyle and everything. So if we think about like, if we really want to, to do something that actually is gonna be effective, we cannot only think about psychology and psychiatry, but also the every single aspect of the personal lives. And it goes, since it's social economic issues, uh, contextual factors, and, and I think like, mental health has been moving forward and seeing the person as a complex individual and even like suicide, when you start suicide, we know that it's more of a factor. So we cannot say like one, that only one cause was responsible for that death. For example, oh, it, was, it was only depression, but no, it's depression, but in the contest and then the connection with the families and then was this, this person also struggling financially. So like when you see this individual, we see this individual as a whole thing and considering every single aspect of their lives, instead of only um, putting the point the cause as just a mental health issue. And I, by what I have seen up to now in my researches and the papers internationally, uh, it, it looks like that these factors, for example, social economic factors, they influence more in Brazil and low middle income countries than, than in high income countries. So if you think about the suicide, what's the causes in high income countries, maybe possibly the statistics already shows the percentage that's related of the victims of suicide related with mental health issues is way higher than it is. Uh, the percentage found in low-income countries, and when we, we go to the socioeconomic factors uh, in high-income countries, it's way lower than it is associated in low-income countries. So I think there are so many aspects that we have to consider, uh, and I was saying not only in the country, but also within country. We are Brazilian people are from Brazil here. We know that Brazil is so diverse, depends on where you go through. However, I, I do believe there are lots of potentials. I don't know if you know the pyramid proposed by the WHO. And I think if we tailor these, these tools to the base of the pyramids, uh, we can find, we can find, we can end up with fantastic results because if we, we are able to treat people who does not need a very specialized care, psychiatric or hospitalization or medicine or, because it's way harder to, to try to put everyone, the whole society to see a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist and not everybody need it either. 
So if we try to tailor these two and try to, to the base of the pyramid and avoid that more people will need more specialized care, it would be amazing. And we would expect in the next years, see some results at the population level, which is the, the type of research that I do is not individual, but more in the entire country in Brazil because of my background in epidemiology. So I think if we manage to develop these tools to approach that and uh, we, we get more people involved, we get more people having access, as Gisele was saying, if we, have, we can have the best tool in the world in terms of mental health, something very effective, but if only 1% of the Brazilian population is actually accessing it, we're not gonna see high impact at the rates in the rates uh, at, the, at the country level. So like if you guys develop an app, it's perfect, only 1% actually says it. I, when I'm doing my research, I won't find the association. Your app won't be able to decrease the rates of suicide or depression or, or anxiety. So I think uh, there are, in some, there are lots of potential, but there are so many aspects that we have to consider to do it, to do so in an effective way.